being that I'm very new to the home assistant world, I started um, back in March. And well, home assistant before then, I was using simply uh, Smart Life. That was my first introduction. My electric company, if if I joined them, like we just moved into this um, townhouse. And this electric company was giving away free Echo devices. Uh, of course, when you signed up for their electric company. So I did. I signed up, got a one-year contract, and they said, um, hey, um, we're going to send you your Echo device. I'm like, okay. You know, never really thought of anything about it. I was, you know, so used to just getting up, going to the wall, turn on the light switch. No big deal. Then I, we discovered Alexa. <laughs> so at first it was just mainly just playing games on it, asking it questions like what year was Thomas Jefferson born, uh, George Wallace, you know, and, um, you know, getting some history on Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. And so um, we just basically asked questions about politicians and stuff like that. It was it was pretty interesting. It 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 gave us the information. It wasn't Google search, of course, or even Bing search, but it did give us the basics. Now, with those basics, uh, we were able to um, add in a bunch of um, uh, plugins for it. Add-ins, I guess. Um, don't remember the exact name, but uh, we were able to add a few things. Eventually, I went to Walmart and bought a mercury light bulb. Um, not a great light bulb to buy, I'm going to be honest. The colors were not bright. The, the, the white was bright, but um, it didn't have daylight white and, and um, it didn't have the uh, soft white or, or it didn't have adjustable white. Excuse me. Um, it, it only had soft white. But uh, when when it showed the colors, it was very dim. I was very disappointed and thinking that all light bulbs were like that. Well, I bought a couple of those um, and it was mainly I did an automation where it was very dark in our hallway, especially at night. Um, the hallways were very dark um, because there were no windows. So basically, I just had it turn on at night, you know, uh, sunset. And it turned it and it dimmed light um, at sunrise. And then by 10 o'clock in, in the morning, it completely turned off. It was just automated. It, it did pretty well, you know, whatever. So um, I started uh, buying other Wi Fi lights um, and found that there were some pretty decent bulbs out there. Um, Wise um, Wi Fi bulbs. And some were color, some were um, adjustable white. And I was happy with it, you know, for the most part. Bought a couple of um, of buttons, you know, Wi-Fi buttons, which uh, work really great. But then I noticed one thing. The network started to slow down. Because my wife and I, we have our work computer. We have our work, uh, our um, personal laptops. We have desktops. Both of us do. We both have a laptop and a desktop. Our niece was staying with us and she had her iPad, her iPhone and her um, school laptop connected. We had our Android phones, you know, connected. Um, we had the smart TV connected to the Wi-Fi because the router um, was in a different room. And being that we were renting the, the townhouse, you know, we can't dig holes in the walls and try to push a wire all the way through to provide a local network. So um, then after that, we decided or I decided to go with smart things. I did a lot of research. Um, I saw Habitat and then I and I said, well, that's based on the videos I was looking at. I thought that was a little bit too hard only because I was just a beginner, you know, and I didn't want to have to learn any code. I just want to learn the basics. And it seemed like smart things was very basic. 
uh, found out when I actually got the damn thing, it did not handle Wi-Fi uh, directly. Okay. Uh, I did figure out how to add Smart Life to it, but then I found out it only supported a few devices, just a few. Very disappointed because I did uh, Mercury was it one of them. And so I eventually had to replace them with Singled light bulbs. Um, I thought those were the best things. You know, they were not expensive. They weren't cheap, but they weren't expensive either. I was able to buy four in a pack for like, you know, $60, $80. And I was able to distribute those throughout the house. Eventually, the entire house was covered with Singled. Then we moved. We moved into our mobile home, um, and it needed more lights, so I bought more, and then realized that the network was slowing down still. So I did all kinds of research, even as smart things support. Why is it so slow? I had motion sensors connected. I had door sensors. You know, when I walk through the hallway, I want that light to come on immediately. Uh, but sometimes when you walk through, about two, three seconds pass, then the light turns on. I'm like, what is going on here? Why is it not working? I didn't know anything about um, router, okay, router bulbs. I think I mentioned this in the first video that I've ever done. So router bulbs, there is a difference. Singled did really well, I'll be honest with you. When it was just, I think it's Singlet, no, uh, Singlet light bulbs. Okay. And there we go. Okay. Singlet. Um, these bulbs did really well. So imagine if you have a small house and maybe you need 10 bulbs. I will say even 30. I, I will. I would take it up to 30 bulbs. So you have a few of these, maybe like in the bathroom to set the mood in the living room, in the bedroom, you have a few of these. Um, you could probably get away with this hub here, just fine, connected to Amazon. Uh, but I wanted to do, you know, some really cool automation and smart things was the best choice for that. But when I start to get into like 50 devices, 60 devices, that is when it stopped working. It, I mean, it was so slow. I will turn on the light on my mobile app, and two or three, two or three seconds later, it turns on. I was like, no. So then I did more research, and I looked at a bunch of YouTubers. Um, Automate Your Life was one of them. Um, even good old UK guy, uh, Paul Hibbert. Uh, who does a comedy version of Smart Home Living. Um, and then, after I did that, I started to um, find Home Assistant. Home Assistant! Home, home Assistant! <laughs> anyway, um, I started to find Home Assistant, and I am like, wow, okay, this is great. Um, I was able to plug away. I decided to go straight into Zigbee, to MQTT, um, I actually bought and I'll um, look for and did a search too because I want to make sure I got the right thing. So I said I want to make sure that I got a Nook because at first I was looking at Raspberry Pi and then I looked at um, um, other um, small devices like that. And what I got from most YouTubers out there was install it on a Nook. Or if you have an old laptop laying around, I don't want to use an old laptop. I want it like a boxy type setup. So I found this. I read the spec. I'm this is overkill. 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 Perfect. And I bought it. April 7th. I said March. Didn't I? In the beginning of the video, I said March. I got into Home Assistant April 7th to 2023, and it was delivered, like, I think it was like two days. Um, and so this little thing, and it's tiny, like, this picture here does not 
show you the true size. I thought it was like like a Intel or or HP, you know, mini work station, you know, like like you see it in in many offices. Uh, this little thing is tiny, and this right here doesn't show the the size. It really doesn't. Granted, it does show the size somewhere. Uh, where is the size? Oh, there it is. How am I going to measure millimeters? <laughs> I live in America, damn it. I don't know what a millimeter is. Anyway, so, um, and it got a bunch of these computers, but I decided to go with this one. This wasn't too much, and it was overkill at the same time. Um, I can go too much with maybe 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte SSD. <laughs> that would have been too much. Gigabit Ethernet, that was important to me. Um, dual Wi-Fi, I mean, it came with Linux, which uh, I found pretty interesting, by the way. And so I set it up. And after trial and error, um. I was able to get Home Assistant installed. In fact, it took a YouTuber to get over one hump, and that was how to flash my thumb drive. That was where I got stuck. And oh my God, I tried to follow the instructions on the website. It was so vague. I looked at three different YouTubers, and this one YouTuber came out of nowhere. And they said to do this and that, and I did this and that, and it worked. It just works. It just works. So I was, oh my God, overjoyed. I even left a comment on that YouTuber's um, page, and he responded saying, thank you. I'm glad my video helped. I swear it was such a headache. It took me over a day or two. Finally, um... One room at a time, I did my office first. And so if you look at my office here, I was able to plug all these devices in there. And, and um, but I didn't quite get to local Tuya yet. And these are all local Tuya devices or Tuya devices on Smart Life. Eventually I was, I said, you know what? I'm gonna figure this out now. I only got one room, so set up. And I did connect Home Assistant to Smart Life. No, I mean, to Amazon. Did I connect it to, to Smart Things? I think I did. Oh, no, no, no. I connected Smart Things to Home Assistant. So I was able to add, like, my wife's office, you know, in there. But Smart Things was controlling everything. But Home Assistant saw everything. Uh, once I got the office together... And was able to, you know, get it going. I figured out how to um, put my computer data in here, the office door sensor, the motion sensor, the temperature gauge, the um, the acquire cube. This was auto discovered, which is amazing. So I, I put that in my dashboard. I like that because you can see what your ink is. I'm out of color, but I got 20% black left. <laughs> I need to order that. I know Amazon can click, click, click. And um, also got my fans. Now, this was a little bit hard because even though there is a Goovy API for Home Assistant, it only does lights. I am, wasn't able to connect my fans. Um, so I have two fans and um, I have two fans. Uh, one is, you know, a, a circulated fan that looks like a regular fan. The other one is a tower fan. And I have on both sides. Like on my left is the ring fan. And on my right is the tower fan. And I also got a dumb fan. I mean, only because this fan I've had since the beginning with the smart switch. I click it on. And it's just one speed because I can't control the fan itself. I can only turn it off and on. So what I did was um, to to basically get over it and, you know, okay, it's not local control. I created three different Amazon routines. I wish I could show you those routines because it's on my mobile phone. Um, but um, th this one here, 
turns on all the fans at a high setting and if I click on this it will trigger that routine okay and this is actually a, a switch actually so if you go to my um, settings input helpers Antonio fan okay here we go so if I turn this on this is the low setting it act it there's an input boolean that literally triggers the Amazon routine so if this is turned on in Amazon it will activate the routine to set the number two setting on both my fans on my left and right side and then if I ever want to um, go high I can just click on high and then when I now here's something that I, I want you to check out because you want to think of everything when you do these kind of things actually okay and so if you go to my office here and I go to my fan section uh, did I pass it uh, I, okay there we go oh you're not going to you won't see it here I gotta go to um, helpers okay so now this turns <laughs> excuse me this turns the fan off right now we got this one here and we got this one here these are both on now if I turn this off it will also turn that off after one minute right <sighs> I think I had a set where it resets these switches but I don't think so and the routine will wait a few minutes let me see hold on okay I think I have a set let me um pull up my phone real quick because um, you want to be able to reset all your switches when you turn something off especially if it's controlled by a different system and home assistant doesn't uh, support Google uh, Goovy fans and heaters so I'm gonna pull up you know what let me go ahead and turn on the recorder on my phone yeah that's what I'm gonna do yeah why not you know okay I'm gonna go to record start recording start make sure my microphone's on so I can sync the audio and it's recording awesome all right so as you can see this is my um, Amazon Alexa app and so if you go to Antonio fan off I thought I set up where yeah my phone yeah so it should turn these items off but it didn't I think I know why I, I see right now what's going on so because these are scenes oh no oh, oh. duh all right so this is um, the tower fan I call it office air and this is the office fan which look you know it's the regular looking fan and this right here is a dumb fan so what I wanted to do was come here and add a wait of only five seconds all right ten seconds screw it and then I'm going to set my smart home and I'm going to tell it is it a switch I have to remember if it's a switch or 
Is it even in Alexa? Hold on. Oh, man. Okay. Why is it doing that? Okay, so let's do this. And so, yeah, immediately I saw where I have some sort of an issue. So I have to fix that now. Oh, goodness. Okay. Um, all devices. Okay, here we go. Uh, it should be. Ah, there it is. Okay, off. Uh, I wish I could do this on a computer. Um, it's like smart things and as well as, um, okay, I am doing it now. They refuse to create a computer version of these dashboard, you know, of this. Because I hate using my phone for doing stuff like this. One, because it is slower. If I can just get on the computer and start controlling things, that's one reason I love Home Assistant because I don't have to be on my phone. I can do this on the computer. But yet, if I'm out and about and I have the new Bocasa or if you have the um, a way to log in remotely, that is probably the best way to do it. Um... Okay, what about scenes? Okay. We'll turn on. Okay. All right, fan. We'll turn on into the office fan. I don't need to run the scenes. I basically just need to. Okay, I think we're good. Oh, okay. I need to save it first. Okay. So basically, if I turn this off, it will turn off the input Boolean switches as well. Okay. So that should work out. Okay. And save. All right. Let me see something real quick. I think, hmm. and see, this is why I wish Home Assistant controlled the fans directly, because having to come up with this was a little tasking, because for every single button, if I decide to use this button to turn off the fan, I want it to turn off all of these, and that means I can, oh, I'm glad we hit this because this makes a great topic for this video. I am going to create a group. Can I do that? Uh, I hate when it does that. All right, here we go. Can I create a group? Yes, I can. A fan group. It will be a, 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 a switch group, actually. A binary sensor group. Oh, let me see what I can do here. Antonio V. Office VT. No, nope, it doesn't find it. Okay. So what is this exactly? Because it's not a fan. Let me see. Let me try fan group. Antonio. Dumb fan. Okay, no. Um. Okay. Group. It's probably a switch. Let me try that. No. Oh my goodness. Okay, you guys are experiencing me doing this. Is it not this it's, it's gonna be a group? Sensor no, it's not a sensor. A light group? I don't think so. No. Okay, where how how do you group input bullions? Goodness gracious. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. 
I think I wasn't reading. Okay. I already did that one, right? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. So I guess on my phone, I will need to, good grief, set all of that. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Okay. I think I have an idea. Because if I just add the VT fan off, naturally it will fire the other routine okay all right i think i've uh goodness gracious okay here we go uh fan off there we go and so this will turn off naturally it should fire the vt off um this routine here. All right, so let me do fan closes. Fan closes. There we go. Okay, that that works out. All right, so now let me show you the um, the turn ons. So whenever this um, Antonio office VT fan air is open, it will set maximum levels of eight and also turn on the dumb fan automatically. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And then fan low will set it to two and it will not turn on the dumb fan. Okay. The dumb fan is it's really not facing my, my face. It's basically going under the desk um, to push air up, you know, my body. So, you know, in case it gets hot in here, I can do that. Especially when I'm at work, I can't really leave my seat. Or if I'm helping a customer, it's kind of hard to pull my full out, phone out and try to talk to them. So now, so that there isn't any loop in this I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because it's already being turned off so it doesn't have to go through this again so it's going to turn off the air um, the t tower fan the regular fan the dumb fan wait about 10 seconds and then these switches I'm going to change that to five all right and then these items the input billions will turn off as well so i got that on already and this is on let me save my oh i actually clicked on disable good grief all right here we go come on i wish i could do this on a computer i really hate doing this on on the phone i know someday uh someone will add the govi fan in other humidifiers well no, i think there is a govi api for 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 um humidifiers but not for the fans in the heaters all right so the tests here it is five seconds later this should trigger as well here we go all right Is it live? Uh, so let me go look at something real quick because something is not triggering correctly. All right, where are my fans at? Okay, I'm going to add the VT switches on here.
so I can monitor that as well. And also, I'm going to go to Devices. Okay, I want to check it again, but I think... Yeah, there we go. So that high is still on. It works. And so Alexa is able to control these. And that turn off the fan. Okay. So here's where I can see what's happening. We're going to do that instead of the other. Okay. So let me turn that on. Turn this on. Oh, it worked. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. So let's do this. If I turn on the low, turn on the high, I should be able to, you know, I can see it here. Okay. Awesome. Oh, wait a minute. I'm missing one. Okay. All right, so if I turn this off. Oh, that is so perfect. All right, let me turn on the dumb fan. And this right here should turn that off. Yes. And then turn on the high. And so this stays on because if I turn that off, it will turn off. So it's not foolproof. Now. Okay. So yeah, every way it goes, it, it just works. Okay. You know, I don't think small fan, yeah. Small fan is not connected to that. The small fan is actually connected to my uh, computer and it blows air from the outside into the machine. Uh, it's just an added. If when I'm rendering video, I turn it on. I will usually don't turn it on when um, that happens. But, you know, that's something else to think about too. How do you set up a routine that will turn on the fan automatically when it gets hot? So I have uh, what's called Has Agent. And basically, okay, let me get out of that. Here we go. CPU load. Okay every 30 minutes, I guess. So let's do this real quick. All right, pull up my PC here. All right, so it's pulling in. It goes high at a certain point. Actually, that's it. When I was rendering my video this morning, cause I, or yesterday morning, my CPU did jump up pretty high. Look at that. And then, of course, when it finished, it dropped. It was doing something else here at this moment. And wait a minute, this is, um, oh, so actually, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what this one is. Something must have been happening at this moment that spiked it up. And that's fine. I mean, it's no big deal. All right. So, um, I can see this here. So I'm going to look for an automation, create automation, 
add a trigger. Okay. From, let me see, where was that at? That was at 89, 89 to 100. I'm gonna add a, um, Edit ID, CPU high. Okay. All right. And save. Let's do 75. Okay. And then add a condition. No. We're going to add a device. Oh, let me stop my recorder on my phone. All right, so we're going to um, add a device to Antonio Office. Actually, I should just type in fan. There we go, thumb fan. Boom. Turn it off, or turn it on, actually. Okay. Anytime there's in, you know, in between 75 and 100, turn it off. And remember, um, in yesterday's video, I mentioned, okay, Antonio, dumb fan for a high CPU. Okay. And that will take care of that. So if I run this, oh, wait a minute, it's the wrong one. It's the small fan. And it's actually on a strip, okay. Turn on office small fan, there we go. All right. I wish there was a way to push my threshold on this so I can test this out. All right, so we're going to rename it. And I like doing this. Okay, computer. Antonio office, update and save all right i'm not using i'm not going to use triggers on these okay so i want to duplicate and let's call this low cpu between zero and 75 I just thought about something. Under. Does it do this? No, it doesn't, of course. Uh, I gotta look that up. But it won't understand that. Yeah, it does. You know what? I got to look into this some more. So I am going to, you know what? I'm going to research this and get back to you guys on that one because I am not sure. I, I know it's probably the easiest answer ever, but I would need to research it. And then when I research this, I'll come back to you because what I'm think my thinking is if it's above, um, let me pull this up again. If the CPU goes above 75%, it will turn on the fan. If it goes below 75%, what I want to do is to hold off for about, you know, 10 minutes 
and then turns off. So, you know, if the computer is hot, you know, I want to make sure that it cools it down completely before it shuts off again. So I'm going to look into this a little bit more um, and see if we can um, do something about that. So I'm going to disable this for now. I will come back another day and talk about this. So definitely look for that video. When I do create that video, um, it will be posted in the end cards. Uh, so it may not be posted right away, but when that video is created, I will post it in the end card uh, so that you can go to that video and hopefully it'll be a much shorter video than this one is. All right, so just real quick, um, I just wanted to show Uh, what I've done, I don't, you see a Larmo, I don't have that set up yet. Only reason why, because it kept triggering the alarm. Um, uh, sometimes the phones don't do very well with, um, GPS. And so, excuse me. So, um, what I want to do is set up keypads. And so I'll get a couple of Sigby um, keypads, one for the garage, one for our front door, and maybe another one for the back window um, for whatever reason that might need to happen. I, you know, maybe I won't feel like walking all the way to the front of the house to disarm the system. And instead of doing that and, and then move away from GPS. Of course, what I might do is is set a wider range so um, let's say for instance um, let's go to cell phone okay so let's say for instance I can do uh, maybe a wider range so let's say um, you know, we walk out the out the door and we have to, you know, punch in the code to turn on the alarm. Great. The house is alarm. It will activate after 30 seconds or a minute. It, it then what I want to do is to check all the windows, make sure that the garage door is closed, make sure all the doors are locked um, and stuff like that. But then if I go outside the city, I want it to go into vacation mode. Because with this, the way it is, it's just doesn't really do right. Um, it Sometimes, you know, we're sitting at home in the phone, GPS says, I'm outside of the area. And then all of a sudden our house is acting up because it's triggering the alarm. So that was one of the frustrating things. I'm going to work with Alarmo. I think it's really good, but I have it disabled now. It's not really doing anything. All I'm doing right now is is that um, is that when I open and close the door, I have a notification to um, turn off or turn on the alarm, and then only and only if one of us is within a few feet of this. Let's say like I think it's like here it will turn off the alarm automatically. Um, caveat, of course, both our phones are dead, my wife and I. And, you know, it's one of those things. You know, the keypad will be a good idea because at least I can set a trigger to delay the alarm when the door opens. Give me about a minute to punch in the code. It disarms the alarm and it goes from there. So I haven't really quite gotten to this yet thoroughly. I do want to get into this in the future. I'm like, this is something I really want to do. Uh, at this time, I'm not going to do it. And the keypad thing, I think, is a good touch. I think that'd be a good idea. All right. Well, that does about does it for this video. Please, 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 please like, subscribe, and comment below. And please share it out.
and join my social medias, please. All that is posted below. Peace out.